Okay, today is May 25th and we are talking about the lab. Today's a Wednesday. The lab is going to happen. The bowling balls are going to be rolled on Friday. Okay, so you have today, Wednesday, and then part of class tomorrow, Thursday, to solve this problem. And the homework between now and then is just to solve this lab and write it up at the end. Hopefully by tomorrow after class, you guys will have figured it out and then you write up your lab. Now some of the groups will have figured it out and some won't. You're going to go home Thursday with the homework of having to figure this out and you'll be scrambling. But I hope you pay really good attention now and that you do your best. One more thought is that tonight's homework, the only homework I am giving you besides, of course, you could keep working on that uh, packet that I sent home that's due next Wednesday. That's the take home final. It would be smart to peck away at that a little bit, but your only homework for tonight is to do 20 minutes of work on this lab. And you need to keep track for your partners that you're working with on what you tried. Okay, so you're going to be accountable to them. What did you work on for your 20 minutes last night? You know, like you need to be an equal lifter of this heavy load. Okay, so just have to try tonight to solve some stuff. Hopefully by the end of the hour today, you'll be a little smarter and understand it better. But all I get that you're going to come out of today with is you'll understand the problem pretty well, but you won't necessarily know how to answer it yet. All right, so here's some thoughts. Draw a rectangle like I have here, and I'd like you to uh, label it with X and Y and a dot down here. This is going to be the starting place of it all, zero, zero. And we could label this anything we wanted, but it's a lot easier to pick zero, zero for our starting place than... 22 comma 963. If you wanted to get really fancy, we could figure out exactly in the commons what latitude and longitude that spot is, and we could have picked that. This is just an arbitrary pick of what to call it. So zero zeros are nice, easy numbers. Now, if you want to get perspective on like where stuff is, this is like you're standing right here with your back to the port, our media center is back there. And over here, as you look out these glass doors that are down here, remember the four glass doors, and what do you see out on the other side of those? Bagel is over there. So can you get perspective on where we are now? Okay. These locker bays are like in here, and there's some locker bays in here. But we're in that uh, tile area that's between the locker bays. All right. So now I'm going to clean this up again. Have a nice, clean rectangle. Okay. This spot's going to be called zero, 0, and this is important. Write this down. This is where the fast ball is going to be released from. The faster of the two ramps is going to be at that position, and it's going to be going this way. Actually, let me use, I made one last night. Come on. And it's the bottom here. There we go. Okay. So there's my bowling ball heading directly, uh, well, in the X direction. Do you get, we know the starting point, and we know its speed. <coughs> I'm going to tell you its speed in a second just to make sure we're all on the same page. Uh, and if we know its speed, you can write its equation. You know, all the equations always look like this. X, Y, Z equals starting point, etc. But we don't have an X, Y, and a Z in this case, unless we're going to make the ball float up in the air. Okay, so just an X and Y. And then we're starting at 0, 0. So plus, here's one thing. Some kids wanted to use different letters for time. But... If we're working off the same clock and, and you had no time delay at all, I know some of you guys have a time delay, but if you had no time delay at all, wouldn't T for this one be the same as the T for the other ramp? Aren't they both T, the same T? Okay, what if you have a time delay, though? One of them's like T minus 1 or T minus 2. Okay, good. All right, the other question I get asked a lot is, which one should I delay? Everything starts with this fastball. That's first. So if there's going to be any delay, the delay would be here. 
on the second ball. Now, it would be really easy if the second one was a vector that was headed... Whoa, sorry. thought I could do it that way. I'll try that again. There. Um, it would be really nice if this guy was just headed exactly south or exactly just in the y distance, if you understand what I mean here. But it's not. Okay, if it were, the equation for it speed would be really easy. Okay, the speed will go in here. I'm not telling you what those uh, numbers are, but I will tell you how fast each ramp is. You know, I took the videos. And I had kids look at it. I had some kids who were able to ascertain the right number, so I know some kids could do it. I know some of you don't have the skills for that, and I'm gonna, I don't want to make that part of this lab because it actually isn't normally part of the lab. But I think it's cool that some kids were able to go in and count frames and figure this out. In the frames per second, it turns out that it is, and this is not perfect. One of the reasons that it still works, even though things aren't perfect, is that bowling balls are fairly big. If this was perfect, perfect, you could make two P's hit each other in the commons. You get how much harder that would be? We have some room for error because the bowling balls are big, okay? But it's still not a lot of room for error. So anyway, the speed rounds to the fast ramp, 2 meters per second. Ramp for the slow ramp, 1 meter per second. Now, by telling you, do you get, I just told you another part of your equation for both of them. So you can write an equation for the slow ball and an equation for the fastball. The fastball here, we had it started right here, and I just told you everything you needed to know to write that equation. Before you leave today, you ought to have this equation. It's going to be a piece of cake. This should be the easy one. If it's not, you're not thinking about it right. Hold on a second. I can't seem to get just the, the inside of that thing, so I'm going to leave it alone. You ought to get this equation for this guy. You ought to be able to get that right before you leave. But this equation is harder. Why? It's going in two different directions. Yes, it's not just going straight south. If it was, you'd be able to say one of these numbers was a 0 and one of these numbers is a, a 1 or a 2 or whatever. But it's not going just one direction, it's going two. So let's zoom in on that area and talk about it for a while. So this is at an angle. What have you figured out that Anish Precalc often defaults back to? What kind of shape? Triangles. It almost comes on, all comes on is a triangle. Why triangles so powerful? Because there's trig that you can do with it. And then you also know some formulas like a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And you know how many degrees the angles have to add up to. And anyway, you can take two directions and turn it into one. You know, kind of remember the vectors thing where we have one this direction and this direction together making this direction like the resultant. Okay, so that resultant there... Some kids asked me a, a good question last hour. They said, why, why don't you just let it go all the way? Why do you cut it off, and why do you make it stop right here when you're drawing this little triangle? Because we know how far this is right there. It's not a question mark. We know how far it goes in one second. We know that distance. But what we don't know is this distance and this distance. And if we knew this distance, once, if, if, once you figure out what this number is, let's say it's 3. It's not, but you'll figure it out. Once you know that distance, do you get all I'd have to tell you is one of these? And you'd be instantly able to figure out the third one. And do you get if I know this angle and this angle? Sorry, sorry, this side and this side, that then I instantly know what angle I need? All right. So, if you have no time delay, there's only one angle that would work, and what sides it goes with. But here's here's the uh, thoughts on how to solve this thing. 
you're going to have to figure out what number goes there in that question spot, mark spot. And then, this is key, if you write your equations, your equations are going to have t's in them for time, right? This will have a time, and this for some of you guys, you'll have a time delay, and so it isn't just t. It'll be like t plus 3 or t minus 3. You have to figure that out. And if you have t in there, you can only have one other variable. Because we're only going to get two equations out of this. These don't have x, y, and z. They only have two equations, an x and a y. If they only have two equations, you can only have two variables. But Mr. Server, we have to know theta, we have to know x, we have to know y, and we have to know t. How can that only be two variables? Here's some, some things. Listen. Once I know x, do you get that I'll be able to instantly figure out y and the angle? That's just a trick, right? So do you get I really only need to know x and I'll know everything else? And to do that, t is the other variable. I need to have x and t figured out. Once I got x and t figured out, I can get all the rest. So I really only need to have two variables in this thing. So that's the key moment. Now here's another thought. Some kids are going to figure out a way to do this with trig. Where they're going to say, oh, I'm not going to use x or y in my equation. I'm going to use trig. And if you use trig, you'll just need an angle and t. All right. So there's what I just told you is very powerful. I just told you essentially the two different ways you can figure this out. I didn't say the answer, of course, because I want to leave you with a hard problem to figure out. All right, now you can ask me some questions. Maybe I've left off some pieces. Yes, sir? Yes, and that is important. Thank you for asking that. So we're all going to use the same. If we went out there and measured, sadly, we'd get like 12 different opinions on how long and how wide this thing is. But we've got definitive, decided upon measurements that we're going to use. And this is... 15.15 meters. And this is... Okay, I've got it. It is 5.4 in this direction. 5.4 meters in that direction. So, what I'd like you to focus on today with your groups is writing the vector for that guy and writing the vector for that guy. But the problem is going to be that most of you are going to end up with three variables to solve for, and you can't. So can you figure out how to get it down to just two variables in your equations? T is probably going to have to be in there and something else. All right? And don't... I don't want to give you too much advice, okay? So, from there, I don't expect you to solve it today. I get that you probably won't. Some of you will. Don't be kids that walk out of here and, I got it, I figured it out, now all I have to do is set these two equations equal and solve them, and I'll have it, okay? And it will be a good moment when you do find that. But some of you won't find it today. Most of you will find it tomorrow, and then and some of you will figure it out overnight tonight, and you'll, like, wake up in the morning, because your subconscious does work on problems. When you're not like using it, it's busy processing stuff and going, how could I do this? And sometimes you get those revelation moments in the morning. Ah, I get it. I know what to do. I get it. I got it. I got it. Okay. Gotcha. For the Beyond 180. I thought you were referencing... Or Beyond 140, sorry. Uh, I thought you were referencing... Who's that guy that uh, that, that movie star that is doing the motivational speaking thing. Yes, I thought you were referencing Shia LaBeouf's Just Do It. Okay. So, I think that's all I have for you for today on the setup of the lab, and uh, that's mostly all I'm going to tell you. Now, I'll walk around to the groups and answer questions for you, like, you know, can you tell us this, can you tell us that, but I am not going to solve this lab for you. I will answer clarifying questions about this or that. 
All right. So that's all I got for the video for today.